Okay, this is uh, part four. Everything you need to know. Derive the lattice rectum of an ellipse, part four. Now, I remember when we did part three, I said I was going to derive something else. And let's say what I was going to do. In part four of the next video, we will derive the total mechanical energy of an elliptical path. That's what I said. And you'll see why you need this. But I've changed this slightly. So let's uh, move on and see how we're going to derive this lattice rectum. For a definition of an ellipse directrix property, see the Wikipedia. Here I'm just going to derive the lattice rectum of an ellipse. Okay. From the center of the ellipse to the extreme left is, is the semi-major axis A. From the center of the ellipse to the extreme left is semi-major axis A. And from the center of the ellipse to the extreme right is the semi-major axis A also. So therefore, the ellipse total length is equal to A plus A equals 2A. The card through the focus and perpendicular to the axis of the ellipse is called the lattice rectum P. Since the ellipse has two foci, it will have two lattice rectums. So through the focus to the ellipse perpendicular to the uh, semi-major axis, we have P. And we have a focus here, F1 and F2. And we also have a lattice rectum here. Okay. So it has two foci, and it has two lattice rectum. Lattice rectum, P, is Latin. Lattice means straight, and rectum means side. It's a little different from the rectum you may be thinking of. So this is straight side. Let's continue. Let's describe the above figure. A is the semi-major axis from the left side to the center is the semi-major axis A. And B is the semi-minor axis from the center to the top of the ellipse. B is the semi-minor axis. P is the lattice rectum from perpendicular through the focus perpendicular to the semi-major axis when then it touches the ellipse, that is called P, the lattice rectum. And it has one on the bottom also. So we've labeled this X slash comma P. In the bottom, we labeled this X comma minus P. We've located both of these. A is the apoapsis right here. And P Sub P is the periapsis. And I labeled that sub P because we have a P here for the lotus lattice rectum. So I labeled periapsis sub P. And the length, total length of the lattice rectum is 2P. From the top to the bottom. C, from the center of the lips to the focus, is semi-major axis A times small e. Small e is called the eccentricity. X equals the distance from the center to the focus. From the center to the focus is the distance X. So let's continue. Okay, let's continue. The equation of this ellipse, this ellipse right here, the equation of this ellipse is x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared equals 1. And here's that equation here. As we defined previously, X is equal to the semi-major axis times the eccentricity, small e. And Y is equal to P. Okay. 
We we just define that P as Y because that's our lattice rectum. So let's plug this into this equation. So therefore, A times E squared over A squared plus P squared over B squared is equal to 1. And now let's solve for B squared over P, P squared over B squared. And we solve for B, P squared over, divided by B squared equals 1 minus AE squared divided by A squared is equal to A squared minus AE squared divided by A squared. Okay. And what we do is, we this 1 is A over A. A squared over A squared is equal to 1. So that gives us our common denominator. So okay. Now, we have P squared divided by B squared is equal to A squared minus A times E squared divided by A squared. Okay. Now, let's look at this Pythagorean theorem above. We know from the focus to the top, of the ellipse, that's equal to the length of the semi-major axis, okay? And you'll notice we have a right triangle here, B, A times E, and A. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find out what B squared is. Okay, let's continue. So here's our previous equations. Solve for B squared. We have our Pythagorean theorem equation here. We solve for b squared. That's a squared minus a times e squared. And b squared is equal to a squared minus a times e squared. And now we substitute b squared into our equation. Well, b squared is equal to a squared minus a times e squared. That's equal to b squared, right? And then we multiply by b squared. And we get B, P squared is equal to B to the fourth divided by A squared. And take the square root of both sides. And lo and behold, we have our lattice rectum. P is equal to B squared divided by A squared. And now we define an equation for a lattice rectum of an ellipse. Let's continue. Here's our previous equation. And here's our previous ellipse. And we have the total length of this lattice rectum is equal to 2b squared over a. Why is that? Well, let's find out. Let's see why. We have points here. Up at the top of the P, we have A times E, because this is X. We have A times E, comma, and Y is equal to B squared divided by A squared. You remember? That's the lattice rectum. Okay. And on the bottom, we have X, which is A times E, comma, and we have minus B squared over A squared. Okay. So let's call this x1, y1, x2, y2. And we have our distance equation, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And so we just plug in what is x1, ae, x2, ae, squared, that cancels, that goes to zero, y2, is minus b squared over a, right here. y1 is equal to a times e, no, a, b squared over a, and so that's b squared over a, and we add those two because that's minus, and then we square them, and then we take the square root. And final answer is l is equal to 2b squared over a. So the total length of the lattice rectum is equal to b, 2b squared divided by a. Let's continue. So this is part four. In part four, I wanted you to see how to derive the lattice rectum of an ellipse. This is a quick video of the lattice rectum of an ellipse. 
Now, in part five, we're going to derive the lattice rectum of an ellipse in terms of the specific angular momentum. And we're going to use all of these equations to solve a problem, a very good problem. And uh, at the end of the, I think the videos go to part to uh, part seven. And so uh, we're going to, in part seven, we'll solve some problems and uh, see how we use each one of these. But I wanted to go to the beginning and derive a lattice rectum because you, you hear about a lattice rectum in ninth and 10th grade algebra, but you never use it anymore. You never use it anymore past ninth grade algebra and 10th grade algebra. So I want to show you how you use that lattice rectum. And it is used in uh, uh, rocket flight. So, and I'm going to show you how it's used in space, uh, space travel. Okay. It's not magic. It's the law. Until next time. See you in part five of the next video.